Hey there guys, I am The Six Machine and welcome back to another Warhammer video. We are back again with another look at the Craft World sub-faction abilities coming with the new Eldar Codex. And today, probably one of the most popular Eldar Craft Worlds, we are taking a look at Yandem. As before, thanks to the leaks, we have now got a full page showing off their new sub-faction abilities, their relic, warlord trait, and their stratagem. So let's see how they've changed and if they're going to be any good going into ninth. First up, you may notice that unlike Ulthwe, Eandon has the much more common two attributes to their trait, and like the current 8th edition version, Stoic Endurance is all about making your units stick around for as long as possible. Currently, this ability lets you automatically pass combat attrition tests and also means that when you're using things like vehicle damage charts to see how units have degraded, you double the wounds remaining. So if your bottom bracket was one to three wounds and you had two wounds left, with Stoic Endurance, you would count as having four wounds and be in the middle bracket instead. Now, however, this rule has changed quite significantly. First up, it's had actually a little bit of a nerf. You don't just flat out ignore combat attrition anymore you just add one to the test roll. So if you fail a morale test, you can still have more models running away. It just means that if you are under half strength, you won't have models running away on a one or a two. It will still just be on a one. This definitely isn't as good as the current eighth edition ruling, of course, because you can now have more models running away, whereas before you couldn't, but it is still quite handy. It means that you are much less likely to have extra models removed if you do fail a morale test. And with a lot of Eldar units being relatively pricey and relatively low in number, that can be a pretty big deal. The second part of Stoic Endurance has also changed, but this is, in my opinion, much, much better now. What it does in the new codex is allow you to reduce the AP of incoming attacks by one if they are minus one or minus two AP. This is really powerful. Obviously, it does nothing against heavy guns like Laz Cannons and Melter, but almost all light and medium firepower and melee attacks are going to fall into that minus one or minus two AP bracket. So this is going to massively boost your durability against all of those types of attacks. Bolt rifles, chainsaws, heavy bolters, venom cannons, orc rockets, and even things like thunder hammers in melee will be getting a drop in their AP if they are attacking your units. It affects a huge swathe of weaponry in the game. And with your three or four up save on most things like wraith units and guardians and aspect warriors, this really will go a long way to helping you pass your saving throws against those kinds of attacks. And for Wraith units especially, Eandin's kind of signature unit, a toughness 6 3 wound minus 1 damage unit with a 3 up save that reduces AP 1 and AP 2 down by 1 is going to be an absolute nightmare for anything less than, you know, a Melter or a Laz Cannon to really get through with this new rule. On the Warlord trait front, Enduring Resolve has completely changed, moving from a once per psychic phase deny the witch, or an extra deny if your Warlord was already a psyker, to a much more useful 5-up shrug against all wounds. Chances are that even in an Eandon list you will have a few psychic units, so having enough deny the witch attempts is probably not going to be a huge, huge problem for most Eldar armies. So the trait as it currently is sometimes felt a bit superfluous in my opinion, but now giving your warlord that extra layer of survivability is going to really make them a pain for your opponent to kill, especially of course, coupled with the stoic endurance attribute to help you ignore that low AP and Weight of fire from small, weak, low AP firepower is going to really, really struggle to take down an Iandan Warlord with this Warlord trait. And even the big D3 plus 3 damage shots from things like Dark Lances will probably only push through 2 or 3 wounds rather than the 5 they normally would do thanks to this Warlord trait. So again, a very, very welcome and a very impressive boost to this Warlord trait in my opinion. 
The Citronome Oviandon is now no longer a Psyker only relic, which is a very nice change. And what it does is that in your command phase, you choose a friendly Iandon spirit host unit within nine inches. And then until your command phase, they gain plus one attack. And if it is a Wraith Guard unit, they also gain battle focus. In some ways, this may seem like a nerf. The Relic as it stands now in its 8th edition version lets you give all Wraith Construct units within 6 inches double their attacks for a phase, meaning you can just absolutely slaughter a critical unit in your enemy's army. However, not only does it inflict D3 mortal wounds on each Wraith unit that it affects, but crucially, it is currently a once per game ability. This new version gives you less attacks per turn, but it can be used every single turn and also gives you that very important battle focus ability on top. So not only are your relatively slow Wraith units going to be able to get around the board that much faster, but it means that you can give them plus one attack every single turn, which will most likely give you more attacks overall across the course of the game rather than just one turn of doubling it. It is a pretty significant change, I will admit, and some people may think that it's worse because you can't do that all-in, once-per-game huge spike of damage on a key unit, but in general, I do think that it is better, and the added battle focus to Wraith units is just an even nicer boost to help you keep that Eldar level of mobility across all of your units. Finally, we have the Eandon Stratagem Guided Wraith Sight, this is still a 1 CP strat, but now instead of just doubling the range of your Spirit Seer's Spirit Mark from 6 inches to 12 inches, it seems that this just now allows you to select a Spirit Host unit anywhere on the table and they are considered to be in range of your selected Spirit Seer model. So this potentially gives you table-wide buffing abilities on the Spirit Seer, which is really, really nice. I don't think we know exactly how or if the Spirit Seer has changed, but at present their Spirit Mark allows the selected unit to reroll hit rolls of 1. The current version of Guided Wraith Sight does also buff this to give you full rerolls as well, so it is a much shorter range overall than this new 9th edition version, but it does admittedly give you a somewhat stronger buff. Although of course it's worth mentioning, if Wraith Sight changes in the new codex, then this new version of the stratagem could end up being just a flat out straight upgrade. But even still, even if it isn't, being able to give reroll hit rolls of one to a unit potentially on the other side of the table could well swing a combat in your favor and maybe something your opponent is completely unprepared for and not expecting. So I do think it definitely has some strong potential for playing around, even if it does just keep the reroll hit rolls of one rather than reroll all hit rolls. So there we go, Craft World Eandon. I'll be honest, it doesn't seem as potent to me as Ulthway, but there are still some very solid buffs coming with these new abilities, and certainly the signature unit of the Wraith Constructs look like they are going to be an absolute powerhouse with this sub-faction. But what do you think? Are you liking these new Eandon changes, or were you hoping for some other new stuff instead? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe for more Warhammer content from me, but until next time, I'll catch you later guys.